Welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, I hope you've had your coffee and donuts because we're in for a very exciting morning full of really interesting and colorful things. Thank you again to um, Professor Jeffrey Meagle for last night's talk about the Kurt Teich um, postcard company and all the interesting ways that their um, printing processes and colorization processes intersect with a particular idea of American modernism. I thought it was absolutely fascinating and was look forward to continuing those discussions. But today, we are going to expand our view on color and form um, into the ancient world, into modern museology, and into outer space. So it could be quite a trip. I'm sure it will be quite a trip, actually. Our first speaker this morning, without further ado, then, is Abir Al-Sabahi, okay, who is a PhD candidate at the Department of Urban Architecture and Interior Design at Politecnico di Milano in Italy with a concentration in museum studies. She's also a lecturer at King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, in the Department of Interior Design. And we're very happy that she has made it all the way here to New York to come and speak. She has a BA in graphic design from American University in Washington, uh, Washington, DC, and an MA in interior design from Marymount University, also in Virginia. Uh, her research interests include interior design pedagogy, issues of museums and identity, museum interiors, and branding. And her paper this morning will be The Influence of Color in Museum Design. So welcome, Abir. Good morning, everyone. So a museum started in Europe by something called the Cabinet of Curiosity, Cabinets of Wonders, or Wonder Rooms during the 16th century. Um, during that time, aristocrats and bourgeoisies in Europe used to collect interesting objects like geological, ethnographical, archaeological, or work of art to display at their homes to, re to reflect their social status. Um, this was very apparent as one of the important subject matters in art during that time. In a painting by Fran Franz uh, Franken, uh, the Younger, dated back to 1636, found at um, Constitutorist uh, Museum in Vienna, um, a viewer can see a description of the object that could be found at the Cabinet of Curiosity, um, such as um, uh, natural specimen crafts, an artwork, instruments, antiquities, and uh, some paintings. As you can see here, um, this is the, the painting that was found in the, the Museum of Vienna. We can see some paintings um, uh, with some sculptures, uh, specimens, uh, lots of things that would give us an idea about what uh, was used to be in the um, Cabinet of Curiosity. In this painting here, um, okay, um, in a painting by the Baroque Flemish um, artist David uh, Tiniers, the Younger, uh, found in the gallery of uh, Arc Doc Leopold in uh, Brussels uh, in 1651, uh, a viewer can experience uh, being in one of the first uh, art galleries in history. In galleries of, the, of those times, the architectural details are very rich, as we can see here in the arches and the details available. Um, and the walls uh, were all covered with uh, paintings in rich golden frames to emphasize the status of the collector. And so the, you can't see any wall colors or anything because it was totally covered with the paintings. During the 19th century, the formation of the museum as a social cultural institution was completed and the phenomenon of the museum went beyond territorial limits of the European continent. In this paper, the use and the influence of color in museum would be discussed. The, some use of light, uh, in addition to the comparison between using color versus omitting colors uh, for different design concepts would be considered. In the 19th century, the museum space had been designed in style that now we call classic. Diverse colors um, with big rooms for bigger collection, uh, smaller rooms or small, um, some specific numbers of paintings, central light coming from big lamp, centralized, and sometimes with some uh, side lamps in really big salons. Designers commonly used the colors part, uh, popular in um, that era of the exhibition. Uh, for example, nowadays the paintings of the artists from the 19th century um, are widely placed over the walls uh, because it was viewed as noble um, 
placed on, over red walls uh, because it was viewed as noble, uh, expressive, and even eccentric to use uh, during that time. Nowadays, however, it's used as a complement to that time and the as a method to create memory related to that period. Sometimes, walls are painted with selected colors, which are reminiscent of that time and the place of subject exhibited, um, of that exhibited work. Exhibition walls of works by artists of the Italian Renaissance, for example, painted in the color of the Terre de Siena, uh, the Siena color. Um, a good example um, could be found in the Alt uh, Pinacoteca in Munich, uh, Germany. It's an art a museum and one of the oldest galleries in the world uh, with famous collections of old master paintings. Walking through that gallery, a visitor could experience one of the classic interior settings with hardwood floorings, classic ornamentation and details on walls um, and arches, as we can see um, on the left uh, uh, side. Um, the color um, the color used on the walls are used to distinguish between the origin and the period of each collection. Um, the tone common to the paintings in a particular room is used as a traditional background, creating a unique and lo logically connected atmospheric environment. At the same time, it's rather hard to choose a tone uh, of color, especially when the particular color is prese uh, pre presented in different works, uh, both in warm and cold uh, tones. So the tent, um, in this case, can be both sub either support or ruin the general color decision of the particular picture. Um, if the united color or the, uh, the tent cannot be found specifically, pictures usually um, uh, were displayed with neutral background like cream or, or beige and other similar colors just to, to be, um, uh, so it wouldn't affect the artwork. Paintings with bright colors um, look more vivid with, back, uh, with dark uh, wall background, and dim colored pictures are classically combined with light walls. Neutrals were dominated during the 1930s because of the relations to the functionalism and simplicity. Observing uh, paintings by Edward uh, Haw um, in 1860, when I was talking about the, uh, the Pinacoteca in Munich, we can see here on the left side um, an, a picture from the 1930s where you can see it's very, um, like the difference between the two of them. The walls are full of um, uh, paintings with lots of details on the ceiling and on the arches, where here it's more simplified. Um, the flooring is still uh, hardwood flooring, but the color, you can see some color on the walls because the, the number of the paintings is diminished. And so you can focus more on the artwork. Um, this is also from the same gallery, and um, we can see that for each collection from a specific period, they chose um, a different color to distinguish between um, each collection. So when you move from one to the other, you could uh, realize that there is a difference um, you know, in the collection and in the time period. Okay, uh, through the development of museum, um, Uh, the neutrals were dominated during the 1930s because of the relations to the functionalism and simplicity. Observing paintings by uh, Edward Haw in 1860 of the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg during the 1839 to the 51, and some current photographs, it's easy to say that the simplification of color and detailed furniture is very clear. Um, these two here are like two different paint, two paintings of the same um, museum. Uh, but definitely you can see the difference with the, again, the wall colors and uh, the simplification of the details. Through, through the development of the museum design, um, it became evident that mostly color could be um, omitted sometimes, but we cannot omit the, the, the importance of light. The role of light is seen as much more significance of understanding and perception of artwork uh, than the use of color, because color is much more stable uh, in comparison when it compared to um, light. Um, it's an influential instrument uh, that should be used very carefully, considering natural light versus the artificial light. 
A good example of that could be in the Glyptotech uh, Museum designed by Leo von uh, Klenz in Munich, Germany. This museum was commissioned by the Bavarian king to house his unique Greek and Roman sculptures. It was designed in a very ornamentation way uh, with lots of details between the 1816 and 1830. But looking at recent pictures of the same museum, it's easy to realize the ongoing transformation and the simplification of the design concept applied that focused on the use of light and the contrast. This is a very old painting here um, uh, in the ni uh, 19th century, and we can see the transformation of that museum. Lots of details on the flooring, um, uh, vivid colors on the walls with lots of details. This picture was in uh, 1930 of the same um, museum. Uh, again, a little bit of simplification on the flooring and the walls. You wouldn't see lots of uh, colors. Uh, while this one here, it's in, 19, it's in 1967. Um, and uh, we can see a huge transformation where the focus mainly was on the natural light and the contrast that creates for um, uh, these sculptures. Uh, which makes the person really focus on the artwork and not focus on the surrounding and the context of the, uh, of the museum. Light is one of the most valuable conditions for meeting between art objects and the viewer. In classic and contemporary museum, light uh, pursues different goals and should be seen from different angles. The main task of the museum lighting and color seen um, in two major goals to help the visitor navigate the space of the museum and to emphasize the uniqueness of each, each exhibit besides creating emotions in space. In fact, these objectives um, uh, include uh, lots of other factors, like light actually determines everything that you see and feel in, in the museum. If it's too strong or too weak, uh, it might break the color balance of the work, which uh, shouldn't be tolerated. Light must not only emphasize the true color, but um, also the texture uh, that is uh, in the museum. It highlights and, uh, the shadows and uh, both dark and light objects. Too intense uh, light leads to the risk of uh, conservation of uh, the museum exhibition. And the designer um, who are engaged in the light design, lighting design, uh, need to think, to really think about the use of light and um, uh, consider that. Museum lighting has changed dramatically in recent years, and the first reason for this was the technology of the lighting, you know, the, the transformation from the halogen light and this kind to the LED light. But what if designers only focus on light and omit colors? Uh, some could argue that background colors that have been used um, in classic museum could be competing with the art exhibition in museums. In his book, Inside the White Cube, uh, Brian O'Doherty, an Irish art critic and academic who lived in New York, discusses the ideology of the gallery space during the 1970s. Throughout his career, uh, he was always uh, fascinated by the art and its representation in galleries. The concentration on in and out of time theme addresses to the concept of prosperity that art already belongs to and that supports its high value and deep meaning. The roots of such construction of the exhibition can be found deeply in history um, and are closely connected with some religious buildings in history. It can be compared to the tombs of ancient Egypt that were constructed to, dist to distance the sacred places from the outside world. The ritual place places were the symbols of culture and history of ancient civilization. They have been keeping their myths and legends. Um, it's believed they were connecting the life on Earth with the upper world. Therefore, these places have um, to be able to create that kind of atmosphere of ultra space that is out of time and out of life. Um, and this is one of the key features of the White Cube exhibitions that are producing the effect of um, segregated spaces. Um, the religious nature of the white cube is supported by the influence it has to humans and um, how to transform anyone who gets inside that space. <clears throat> um, in the 21st Century Museum of Contemporary Art in Kanazawa in Japan, 
uh, the one that is designed by uh, Sana in 2004, is a great representation of the white cube. As you can see, this is the, the museum that I'm talking about in uh, Kazanawa. And this is, uh, you know, some pictures of the interior of that museum. And you can see th the main focus of the, uh, the white cube is that it transforms the, the viewer from um, the real world to some, somewhere heavenly, uh, where you can only focus on the artwork and not focus on anything else. Um, Walking throughout that space, um, the, a visitor experienced a unique place that is hard, um, that had the ability to both leaving behind the past and control the future. This is reached with special relation to the trans, transcend, transcendental uh, issues of power and presence. The specific feature of this mode is that they addresses uh, to the other world that is very powerful. The concept became very popular and was used to create also the White Cube Museum in London. Uh, this is a, a picture of that museum um, there. Um, and the, the modern uh, museum in uh, Munich in Germany and the new museum in um, New York as well. And when we uh, observe these museums, we can see that they are very similar in style. Um, they're all, you know, like, it, too white inside where the main focus on lighting on the ceiling, um, which I think sometimes it takes away from the identity of museums that makes all of them look very similar and um, uh, somewhat, un uh, somewhat undistinguishable. The white cube can be re uh, replaced with a dark room where uh, paintings are placed on a dark background illuminated just over the border of the frame. Um, in his article, Black Box Sciences um, in Black Box uh, Science Centers, Richard Toon believes of the notion that the, uh, the content of gallery space should not have to compete with its setting. In, in a museum like the National Museum of Horoji Treasures in Tokyo, uh, which was built in 1999, um, Yoshio, the designer Yoshio Tanaguchi uh, used minimal aesthetics as a means of display to represent those ancient objects that we can see here, <coughs> which previously stored at the Hiroji Temple <coughs> for thousands of years. A visitor um, enters this museum from an airy transparent entrance. The whole uh, facade of that uh, museum is uh, glass and um, uh, very transparent, so you enter uh, that space um, uh, guided to the gallery where all the ancient objects are displayed. The designer used honey-colored oak flooring that contrasts highly with the surrounding darkness, um, as you can see here in this picture. It's actually, in, in reality, it's even darker than that, where you only see the pedestals uh, with the artwork on top of them. The designer um, illuminated um, uh, illuminated these pedestals uh, using uh, down lights from the ceiling and up, uh, upturned rays from uh, fiber optics embodied in the pedestals themselves. The sculptures emerge from the surrounding darkness like the ranks of a heavenly host. The sculptures were um, uh, ancient objects in bronze. Uh, they're Buddhas uh, from the seventh century and um, it was placed on like a grid of these pedestals. But what if the space of the, uh, what if the space became the artwork itself? Patrick Ireland, a conceptual artist that uh, restored art um, to a living context, the total opposite of the white cube and the black box. He believes that modern architecture sanitized, idealized, and uh, platonic interiors are not for people. Working on the museum in Todi um, in Italy, Ireland had, has left the exterior intact, the whole exterior of the building intact, while converting a domestic interior into an artwork. So when you enter to each room of, of um, this museum, you, it's like living inside the art piece itself. It's almost like uh, emerging into the art itself and living it. Um, in his description, Ireland said the painting, uh, the paintings uh, hu um, huge um, hug the walls, 
in an embrace that makes them part of the architecture. As I uh, paint, I feel my paintings are rebuilding the, the house uh, from the inside. <coughs> Another interesting example of the extreme use of color could be found in the city lounge in uh, St. Galen in Switzerland. Um, the largest public living room, um, as they call it, it was designed by Carlos Martinez and uh, Pipilote uh, Riz. Uh, the dramatic use of the red col colored carpet creating a huge impact on visitors and uh, makes the space, events, and conversation made there uh, very memorable. So here we can see the relation of the color to the memory um, when the, there is an extreme use of color in a certain space and whatever happens there, it, re it always reminds you, um, you know, like it, 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 it's always connected with the memory. <coughs> um, uh, this space was designed as a part of a design competition to create a public living space for people to relax, converse, um, and park their cars and walk around. Using colors could be very influential in museums to assist in wayfinding systems as well. Uh, lots of museums use color coding um, to differentiate between different exhibitions or different functions in that exhibition. In the Arles Museum of Antiquities in France, the designer Henry uh, Crenani designed this museum keeping in mind the basic functions of the archaeological museum. The first one, the blue area, uh, transmissions and uh, presentation of the collection of the public. Well, the second one, the red uh, area, it houses the conservation and the restoration um, area with mosaic conservation and restoration. And the green area, um, it's the, um, the reception of different kind of uh, public, the workshops and archaeological, uh, archaeology, archaeology um, laboratory and the internship area. Um, in addition, in his book, uh, The Handbook for Museums, uh, Edson says, color is a great tool to define signage. Uh, for example, like um, exit signs, usually uh, backlit in an eye um, catching red. Wayfinding signs for restrooms are um, not often brightly colored, depending more on the size and the placement of uh, to attract, uh, to attract attention. Um, informational signs usually use a color coding uh, strategy so, uh, to assist in the easy recognition. Danger signs are normally large and uh, brightly colored. Um, in rapidly changing world, the museum remains as a sociocultural, sociocultural institution, uh, representative uh, to the objective and uh, subjective factors that encourages it to seek ways of solving problems of selection, conservation, um, interpretation, and inclusion of the, in, uh, the communicative process um, objectives of contemporary art. At the same time, the museum is a constant, giving a new artistic reality opportunity to assert its timeless value. Study of the art of the 20th, uh, 20th century uh, since uh, radical revolution and its early years associated with the changes in aesthetic and cultural norms. The emergence of fundamentally new artistic codes with the creation of the art and its uh, perception allowed to consider the use of light and color like one of the semantic and structure dominant of the contemporary art. In conclusion, color is a huge factor when creating a museum. It could be used in diverse ways to imply different functions. Uh, some could argue that the, in cases of uh, white cubes and the black box, art is viewed um, in an unbiased way without any context or influence. However, I believe uh, you know, some viewers that uh, could think it, it's totally biased and controlling and lacks creativity because in this way, the role of uh, the curators of the uh, museums are somewhat minimized and their conceptual points of view is diminished. Therefore, it's valid to say that there are no specific rules for choosing colors in, in museum other than sensibility, which in my opinion develops from um, three important um, uh, things. Um, one is the awareness of the, um, the awareness of the, uh, the everything new in the field of the museum designs. Uh, the understanding of elements and principles of uh, interior design, in addition to having clearly defined design concept.
Thank you.